Broadcasting live from Halifax, Nova Scotia, this is the Wrestle Center Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestle Center Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dave Boyce. We have another host here, Justin Parsons Cody. How you doing, Justin? Good. You got to look at a sheet to be able to say my name now. You don't always, know me. <laughs> always. <laughs> we were at Boomers one night, and I remember the uh, drunken Wrestle Center podcast that no one's ever seen. But we, I called you Justin Cody every time. Or oh, Justin, that's yeah, Justin Cody. Oh yeah, like, Bubba. Hey, here's <laughs> Justin Cody. <laughs> Just- maybe one, maybe one day that'll get released. Maybe, maybe. Um, missing is uh, Sean Ritchie. He is, uh, I don't know where Sean is tonight. He's hes a busy man, this guy. Yeah. But he sends his regards. He wants to be uh, here, but he couldn't. So anyway, here we are. Uh, is this the first podcast of the year? We did one before, didn't we? Just like a small one to promote the show? I think so. It's been so long. I don't know. Anyway, here we are. Yay! Um, <laughs> we are hot off the heels of uh, the show last Thursday night. Um, it was our one-year anniversary show. Uh, needless to say, I think it went off very well. Uh, the reviews online have been all positive. Um, what do you think of the show, Justin? It was... Um... I'm drinking beer. Ah, it's all good. Uh... Like the day before setting up for everything and then getting everything fine tuned the day of and those shows like doing that always makes me a little stressed out because I want to make sure that you know the fans get to see the best quality not in, not in terms of the of the wrestlers because yes we have the best quality wrestlers but as in visually for the set and how the ring set up and um, once the show starts it's like a little bit less stressful. Mm-hmm. But for stake, everybody last night from the crew to everybody backstage was just 100% like ready. And it was the best I've seen out of the whole year that I've been a part of the – well, almost the whole year for me. Yeah. I've been a part of the show. I don't know if a lot of fans understand just what goes in – like show day, we are – well, you guys were at the forum. I got there at 8.30. You guys were already there. Yeah, well, we uh, we get there the night before, and we set up the ring, yeah. at least, and then uh, most times, if we don't get up set, set up till late, it'll just be the ring, and then we'll work on most of the stuff the next morning, right. but uh, work that we got there pretty early, so we had most of the stuff done the night before, yeah. Yeah. and then it was just fine-tuning, like, the entrance with the curtains ways and everything like that, so. Which we all do, like, you guys, everyone in Russell Center, like, it's not the forum that puts out all those chairs, that's... That's you guys, um, me, uh, we get the chairs out, get the ring up, uh, we're, we have to uh, go over all our notes to make sure they're in sync, uh, uh, music entrance, we always have to have damn music entrance, we have to get to in order, um, we usually do that five minutes before the show. <laughs> it was, there was no music mess up this time, so... No, it was good. Uh, uh, that. No, no, there wasn't, no, we're good. Um, of course, we had uh, sometimes most of the shows we put the ring up the day of the show, but we were actually lucky enough to get it night night before. So you guys, yes. you know, as the, uh, students of uh, Wildman Academy, you get a chance, you know, empty arena with a ring, you get in, and you guys did your thing for a bit. Um, yeah. Then of course, um, CTV came at 10 a.m. Uh, Anna Almeida, which probably most likely be the biggest wrestling fan I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that definitely threw me off because you see, and I'm probably going to get, you know, a lot of flack for this, but you see a pretty little lady come in the doorway. You're like, oh, okay, news reporter. We'll see how it goes. Cause I wasn't there for the first one that they did last year. And then she gets in and she's talking to Mick and, Okay, she knows her stuff. She must have done some research. And then the camera goes off and she starts talking about she's been to WrestleMania, Raw, all these yeah. shows and stuff. And it's like, holy. Like, wow. yeah. <laughs> all uh, right. Like, like you said, she was able to interview uh, Mick Foley. That was the first time I laid my eyes on the man, um, other than like going to a wrestling show to see him, of course. But yeah. he came in, uh, the nicest guy ever. Um, got in the ring, did the interview with uh, Anna. She was gushing all over him. Uh, 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 as we all sat back and just watched. I don't know if that's the word you want to use, gushing all over him, yeah, but was, we'll go with that. 
she was uh she was excited to be there yeah. and then uh it was like they did the interview and as soon as it ended like the camera guy said uh okay we're done and she goes holy shit <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome yeah and then of course she said she was a wrestling fan and had her own move the a-bomb i believe she uh a-bomb. and Mick said let's see it so who gets the ring justin Tell us a little bit about uh, Anna Almeida from CTV jumping on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they, they, everyone wanted to see it, so I was like, "All right, let's go." So I took a give her, let, let her give me a shoulder tackle when I came off the ropes, and then she stood above me. And uh, my initial thought was, I thought she was going to do like a rikishi type move, where she just kicked her legs out and like land it right on my like stomach or my chest. But then she's standing there, and she does the A, and then she just slams her knees down to my chest, and I just wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I was like, all right, good, we're good. we'll go with that. And the friends that we all were, we were like, do it again, do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my good friend, so she does it again, and yeah, she, she really shot that move. <laughs> yeah, uh, so as the day goes on, of course, we do all our little things, like prepping the, the building and... Uh, I had a few hours. I got to go home and do some social media for the event. I don't know what you were doing, um, but I'm pretty sure you were running around like, and it's an all day thing. And then of course the event happens and then afterwards and then tearing down the ring and putting in the truck and it's 16 hour day for you, 14. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. We can go with that. Like uh, some days, like I got to work the day of, so I won't get off. So about. bit, I don't know. It all depends. Um, but what most. Forum, what time are we at the forum uh, day of the show? This show? Yeah. Eight. Eight, thir- eight. Eight o'clock. In the morning. Yeah. Right. And the show went till eleven thirty, and then you stayed afterwards. And yeah. You had to drive the talent home. What time did you say you were completely done with it all and were on your own time? One. Um. I got home at like two thirty, <laughs> exactly. and then. I- I got home at two thirty in the morning. I took about an hour and forty five minute nap. Then I had to get back up and bring some of the talent to the airport. Come back home, took another hour and a half nap, and then went to work for the day. You are a beast. <laughs> well, it's, it's 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 you know you you do this because you love it. You know what I mean? Like you ask any wrestler, they've done the same thing. Like so, it's. It's awesome. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Friday I was drained, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, getting closer to the show, of course, our doors opened up at five o'clock for a VIP. Yeah, that was really weird. Like it was, it was awesome because you know they were doing the VIP thing, but we're just not used to that. We're just used to right. doors open, boom, everybody's in, and now it's okay. Now we got two less hours to make sure the the set, the, the set's ready, that the music's ready, that everything's done. And then we've also got fans walking around, so you got to be careful. You can't, like, right. you know what I mean? Like, luckily, I can go out there because the fans know I'm a you know, student and stuff like that, so they know why I'm running around. But, like, everybody else, you know, they got to stay backstage now. And it's, yeah. You know, there's two more hours of added heat between people. So. And it was very stressful because we had the, the meet and greet with Mick Foley, which went off awesome. He was so good to the fans. He took his time, each and every one of them. So yeah. Mr. Sacco's, um, we actually raised a ton of money for IWK. We're going to announce it later on this week, exactly how much. Yeah. Um, but he took his time. But that being said, <laughs> him taking his time with the 100 fans ran into uh, hour two, which was supposed to be our intimate Q&A with them. I don't yeah, even know. It was a little stressful. <laughs> I don't even know it was him. Hang, uh, you know, him taking his time. It was just that there was a hundred people. Mm-hmm. Like to like, I'm not going to do the math because I'm not that great at it. But if you take a hundred people and divide it by sixty minutes, that's obviously less than a minute a person. So that's pretty unfair. Yeah, but but and, you know what I mean. You know, it was an issue. Uh, you know, we were running around trying to figure out different ideas, what we're going to do. Or at one point, I was like, why don't we just do the Q&A during this? I could just walk down. But Jason wanted the Q&A. He, went, he offered it to the fans. We gave it to them. So um, we, we told them after the show, we would have the Q&A. Say- don't tell anybody else. <laughs> just the VIP people. Let's see yeah. if we can keep a secret, which they did. The show yeah. went on. The arena emptied out, and the VIP got their Q and A with Mick Foley. It was great. Um, yeah. 
it was a, yeah, it was just, Mick Foley was phenomenal. Um, also, another fun moment during the show uh, was uh, going to pick up Mick Foley for me. I had, I had to go pick him up. Yeah. And uh, it was a little intimidating, but uh, what, what, a, what a super, super nice guy. Oh, he's awesome. I was, I was jealous of you because I just dropped off Colt from picking him up from the airport, and I was like two lights away from the forum. And I still had other stuff to do. And he, and Jason's like, well, I need you. To, can you go pick him up? I was like, where's Dave? And he's like, he's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, like I still got stuff to do. And I'm sure Dave's busy too, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to say no. And I wasn't in the forum and I checked my Facebook and you're like, oh, I have to pick up McFoley. Like you're on. <laughs> well, at least he's not angry. <laughs> yeah. And then it was kind of cool because um, uh, after we got – you know, I had him in my car and we came to the forum stuff and then he had to do a video message for another wrestling organization. So he got me to hold the camera and he did that little spiel. And uh, I said to him, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm 42 years old and I, I've been following your career like way back when I could sit here and pick your brain about wrestling all day and night. I said, but what I really want to talk about is um, I play Santa Claus. <laughs> And we talked about playing Santa Claus, the two of us, because he's such a Santa Claus yeah. guy. And I was telling him I, I do it at the nursing home with the Alzheimer's residents, and he was asking me questions. And so that was my that my moment with uh, the wrestling icon. We were talking well, about Santa Claus. That's something different for him too, right? Because he's so used to the wrestling questions and stuff like that. So he got to ask you questions, but I'm sure it doesn't happen too often. So yeah. So anyway, who, really really, who really wants to talk to Dave Boy? So really. really? <laughs> Boring. Uh, quickly, without giving away uh, the results, we'll just quickly go through the card. It was fantastic. Um, bell time was 8 o'clock, and I believe I started at 8.01, so we were right on the dot. Um, I welcomed everybody. Greaser James Carr came out, interrupted me, did his thing. Uh, speaking of uh, <clears throat> James Carr, uh, before we go any further, uh, we have the Greaser Man with us here. So let's go to Greaser James Carr. Yay. We are back and we are joined live by the one and only Greaser James Carr from Wrestle Center. Mr. Carr, you know Justin, right? Unfortunately. Yeah. Put, put those things away. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're discussing um, last week's show, but before that, let's just quickly uh, the full last year at Russell Center, what are your thoughts on uh, Russell Center as a company and your experience so far? It's awesome. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> You're you awesome. Say, you, you, guys, you guys have been there. You've been at all the shows. What else can you say? It's just it's wicked. Yeah. You got to work with uh, the likes of uh, Coke Cabana, of course. Uh, yeah. Your, your oh, it's... Tommy Star. <laughs> I've, had, I've had a ton of awesome experiences since I started with Wrestle Center. I mean, from where I was before Wrestle Center to where I am now is just night and day. Like, and it's all because of what I've been able to do there. It's all because I've been able to actually talk on a microphone and, you know, try to do my gimmick a little bit instead of just going out there and having mediocre matches. <laughs> I've been able to, uh, due to the reactions of the people that come to the Wrestle Center shows, I've been able to uh, really improve. All yeah. around, I. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the great moments uh, was uh, when Coca Cabana stole your leather coat and proceeded to uh, empty the pockets. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all those things were Justin's. You were just holding them for him, right? <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. You... <laughs> he told me to hold on to them. He gave me this bag. It was this pink. It was pink and it was fuzzy. He said, "Put all the stuff in the pocket." So I said. Your stuff, not mine, bro. And then Cabana stole it. You saw him backstage. He was back there by my stuff. Unacceptable. Justin's Unacceptable. speechless. Ugh. Yeah, say something. Track. I don't, know what, I don't know what to say to you anymore, man. <laughs> don't say anything. It usually gets you by. Yeah. That's what I thought. Shut up. <laughs> uh, the questions. Last, the, uh, last week, uh, the half hour. Oh, we, Greaser has a cat. <laughs> No surprise, yeah. he's a fucking cat lady. What are you talking about? This is the greasiest cat known to man. Say hi, Mira. This is so ruining your gimmick. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, last week, the Halifax Forum was standing room only. It was packed. Uh, what was it like? You came out first thing, inter interrupted me uh, when you got out there in the rain. So you've been talking for so long I know, before the right? show starts. Trust me, I don't want to be out there. Uh, yeah. What think? What do you think of the house? Huge. It was awesome. Yeah. I, one of the biggest houses I've ever worked for, for sure. It was. I, I was expecting that, to be honest with you. After the success of the last however many shows and then a name like Mick Foley, you're, you know you're going to draw big, yeah. especially after we've been off since November. Yeah. Um, Saw it coming. Yeah. You had the last man standing match with Nick Diggs. Uh <laughs> last man standing, falls count anywhere, no holds barred hardcore match. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in between. Um, the ending of the match uh, was kind of a oh my god moment. Uh, talk us through what your thought process during that whole uh, ending was. Well, I'm just laying there. The ending of who won, of course, because we can't tell people yet who won, who lost. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter who won. That's right. Everybody, everybody knows the Greeks are always wins. So, so I'm laying on the table. <laughs> Just hoping that he doesn't crush me, basically. And I didn't have my eyes directly on him, and all I could hear was, whoa! Next thing I know, I'm <laughs> laying on the ground, and I, I looked down, and I thought that his head was underneath the table. And I was really, <laughs> I was asking him, I was like, are you okay, are you okay? And he didn't answer me. But, uh, you know, everything turned out to be fine. Yeah, from our view, I couldn't see his head. Yeah, no, me had, neither. It's right beside me. I had uh, Madison Miles beside me, and I looked at her and said, I, I don't see his head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he'd be better off without his head anyway, that Nick. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when we came out to help him, after, you know, Dylan got choked and everything like that, you know, Dylan right away didn't even have to ask him. He's like, I'm good. And then, like, I, I haul him out of the way a little tiny bit, and I look at Nick, and he's... He's laying down, all hunched over, and I, I'm like, Nick, are you okay? And I'll, I'll get out of him as, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, all right, well, okay, fair enough. Yeah, like, that's I'm, Nick. That's yeah. Nick. Yeah. As long as he can, as long as he can walk, he's still good. Oh my God, I remember in our first month of training, we did like a little series of matches at Exhibition Park, at like the Guy Show, I think it was called. And it was before we should have been in a ring. Like, way before we should have been in the ring. And I think Nick was having a match against Dylan. And Nick went to jump off the bottom rope and stomp on Dylan's leg. And his knee went, like, sideways like that when he came down. <laughs> and he wrestled for, like, another four minutes in front of, like, five people. And then he couldn't walk for, like, a month. But... <laughs> He never would have sold it in the ring. You, you, you never would have known that he was actually hurt. He's, that's the way Nick is. So. It's awesome. Go, <laughs> go back to the night that uh, Rick Doyle busted you open. The first night? Yeah. How, how'd that feel? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've been doing pro wrestling for a couple of years now, and, you know, that is – it's awesome. It's why I, why I do this for everybody. I, I love it, but – to be pinned down underneath an MMA fighter was a whole different experience. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> he won I played a lot that night. I spent a lot of time in the hospital afterwards, so, you know, you and win then, some, you lose some. Yeah. He and won then, his last fight, so. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I heard that. Good. Uh, <laughs> which also reminds me people. of, uh, it reminds me, too, of the last show we had, uh, prior to this past week at Exhibition Park. And of course, Double um, XL does the um, jumping off one corner into the other as Nick Diggs is holding the chair to your face. Once again, doesn't turn out very well for you. Talk us, talk to us a little bit about that moment. That was, <laughs> that was another, another uh, <laughs> case of just sitting there waiting for something to happen. And then the results turning out not so good. This time for me. That that hurt, man. That hurt a lot. And the the chair caught me just at the top of the ear and above the ear. And the, I had a bump on my head right here, 
for like a week or so, and it, it was almost impossible to lay down because I had a cut on the top of my ear. That's that's where the blood came from, and it, like laying on my ear was impossible for like a month. Oh. It hurt so bad. <laughs> Brutal. You know, spot looked good though. It looked great <laughs> at your expense. All good yeah. spot, right? It's always at my expense. Take one for the team, I guess. I it's remember that it. day because I even said to Justin, I was like, "Why is the uh, St. John ambulance people here? You know, nothing's gonna happen." <laughs> I that's what I said too. I'm like, and then I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down at the music table, and they're like, like they're they're around most of the night, and then you know, Greaser's match comes up, and they're like, "Are we allowed sitting out here by the curtain?" And I'm like. Yeah, sure. We're not gonna need you, but whatever. And then when we're like, when we're setting up for the show, like I'm I'm in uh, in charge of setting up the ring and and uh, entrance and everything like that. So I set up the ring. Everything's good to go. And then double XL comes around and is like, I really need the top rope to be really really strong. Like really, you know what I mean? And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I got, like, I got so many people calling me. That's awesome. Justin's now going to stand up and strip for us. Yeah. You, so I got I'm going to get you. <laughs> um, and, like, then I, you know, I, Steve's like, no, I really need this top rope to be super, super strong. Like, Why? And he, he's just like, no, no, I just need to make sure. So he jumps off at once, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then. You like, mean you knew, you knew before the match he was going to do that? He didn't jump from corner to corner. He just jumped. That makes off. one of us. <laughs> you know what? Well, as soon as soon as he came out, or as soon as they you were laying in the corner, I knew it was going to happen, and I was like, you know what? He deserves it. I'm going to let them. Oh, uh, shots fired. I'm going to let no, it happen. Okay, okay. You know what? Just while, while we're here, I, <laughs> here was, we go. I remember watching one of the last few podcasts. Okay, and I saw Justin on here. Say, Justin, and I quote, fuck James Carr, end quote. Justin, <laughs> I will give you 10 seconds to explain yourself, and then I will tell you how I feel. And go. And go. <laughs> All you do is pick on me, slap me around, and treat me like shit. So you know what? At the end of the day, you can go fuck yourself. Fuck you! No. Oh. And our rating just went through. <laughs> See, and that's all he, that's all he can, can say. He's not too smart that he can come up with a better re rebuttal than that. So he's got to say, fuck you. One of the best fuck parts. You, one of the best parts of Voltage walk away. is. Yeah. Just walk away. One of the best parts of Voltage ass. is you two in the backstage area. Uh, Greaser James Carr, what's it like to slap Justin in the face? It was fucking excellent. I hope my took face many times. <laughs> too many goddamn times, buddy. I'll do it again. I'll do it again right now. Where are you at? How far away are you? You know where I live. I don't know where you live. I smell yeah. main event. <laughs> main event. He's not worth the main event. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen you main event yet either, so. I don't want a main event. I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. So uh, let's get back just real quick before you two get into it. Sorry. Um, Sorry, everybody, about the horrible turn that the podcast has taken because of the grace of <laughs> this, he must, this guy's fault. He's obviously had no too good. much to drink, so, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, let him, I'll, let him, I'll let him get away with it because he's drinking, but we'll see, you know. Okay. There's always next time. Um, there will be a next time. So we said earlier, uh, the legendary Mick Foley applied the minimal claw, Mr. Sacco, in your mouth. He's done it to the likes of The Rock, Stone Cold, The Undertaker. Um, you're in an elite list of people, my friend. An elite list? I, would, I don't know if i go that far. If, if, can you really call a list I, elite? A list of people getting socks shoved in their mouth? I would say so. You know what I mean? I I've seen people get socks shoved in their mouth before, and then they threw up afterwards. Yeah. I, so I guess thing is, I consider myself lucky. So the thing is, greasers have a lot worse shoved in his mouth, so... <laughs> <laughs> if Mick Foley ever came back to Wrestle Center, would you uh, challenge him or go up to him and, you know, get some. I'm going to kick this guy's ass first. Well, get him first. Jam a, jam a sock down his yeah, throat. I'll, I'll then... fight Mick Foley. I'll fight Mick Foley. I'll fight anybody. I don't care. There's a challenge Mick I was looking for. Greaser James Carr is calling. I'll fight you. Him. You want to fight? 
You and me, next show. I'm too old. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You and me, next show. I, submission I, match. I want Tyler. Oh, he's no the submission holds. <laughs> and I'll, I'll fight you in a submission match. Uh, someday, someday. Beard versus beard. You got to grow it out. Uh, one, one of the, uh, <laughs> the next show is April 9th. Um, you were considered to vote for uh, Matt Seidel. What's up with that? I don't know who made the list, not me. What would you do if you had Matt Seidel in the ring? I'd beat him like I beat everybody else. <laughs> yeah, with shoot your goon. Press, shoot star piss off. What? Yeah, with your goon and help. My goon? Yeah. You're talking about Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, Tommy's one of my good friends, and you changed them so much, but that's cool. Yeah, I changed them. He needed to change. Change is good. Speaking of change, Mike, speaking of Tommy and change, the last year, my God, he's completely looked awesome. Like, he's like one Forget of the Forget about looks, just everything. Tommy is coming. I'm sure it's greaser. Uh, I'm sure it's greaser's uh, way of uh, why he's looking the way he is, right? You, you're training or all the money. It's the money. Yeah. <laughs> I pay for that gym membership. You know that. <laughs> With that said, uh, Greaser James Carr is always a pleasure. Hopefully, we'll have you back. Maybe you and Justin can uh, spar in the ring the next show. Who knows? Let's get a ring. It won't be much of a fight. He'll be going down pretty quick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. There, there we go. We'll end it on that note. Thank you ever so much for being on the Wrestle Center podcast. We will see you on April the 9th at the Halifax Forum Multipurpose Center. Peace out, losers. <laughs> and that was a greaser, James Carr. <laughs> Justin, I think he, uh, I think he likes you. Yeah, really big fan. He's such a yeah. fucking jerk. Like I, I... <laughs> anyways. Hopefully, we'll have him on again sometime. Um, yeah. Getting back to the uh, big card there last week, um, Julian Young took on uh, the debut of Earl Cooter. I was excited to see Earl Cooter. I knew all yeah. about him. Uh, I don't know the fans. I, I thought the fans would pop really big for Earl Cooter, but I guess maybe in a lot, a lot of people knew him as much as I thought they would. I don't. I don't know. Was it me or? Well, no. Yeah, you know, at the same time, like we've heard a lot about him because, like, most of the guys in the back have wrestled with them down the states or like the last time earl was here i think was like five or six years ago or something okay it was during uh i can't remember which tour it was uh some legends tour but i can't remember who was on it but uh but yeah he said it's been a while since he come up here and he was supposed to come up here last summer he said but he got injured or mm-hmm. something happened so well it didn't uh, take long because he made the fans love him because yeah. my god what a talent yeah no, it was, it was a, it was, and then you know him and Julian. There was a, there was a feeling out moment during the beginning of the match because I don't think they've ever wrestled each other. And then once they, that was it. And then the fans, you know, right away were starting to cheer for him. So it's good. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with Julian Young. My God, he's young. Um, Julian, what a pop Julian got. I know. Right. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, Dylan Sharp faced Double XL, and Double XL. We actually got two doses of Double XL uh, that night. Um, yeah. Tommy Starr and Colt Cabana. I can't say enough good things about Colt Cabana backstage, uh, in the ring, whatever. He's one of the nicest, funniest guys I've ever met. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you got to ride with him. You picked him up at the airport, right? Yeah. What so do you think Colt cool. Cabana? He's, oh, he's awesome. He's just, uh, <laughs> we pick him up and, uh, <clears throat> my brother was with me. Oh, that's right. Yeah. My brother was with me. So, um, you know, we, we he comes down the steps and uh, he walks over to the door, you know, shake his hand. He remembers me. And then uh, I introduced him to my brother. And then we're standing there waiting around. And Matthew's chit chat with him. I'm chit chatting with him. And then uh, we go to get in the car. And Matthew, as the respectful kid that he is, and especially when it comes to wrestling, you know, he goes to get in the back seat. And Colt's like, no, it's, you know, you, you can sit in the front. And Matthew's like, seriously? He's like, yeah. So, like, and he's so quick, like with with his humor. Yeah. He gets in the back. He gets in the back seat, and I've got one of my friend's PlayStation controllers in the car because I I took a loan of it for a bit, and I just keep forgetting to take it out of the car and bring it to his house. So he gets in the back. I was like, you sure? And he's like, yeah, it's okay. You know, I'll just play some PlayStation. You know, I'll play a driving game. Like, and I'll just just like the quick little dry stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then brother's telling a story, and uh, he's uh, he's talking about. 
going through customs and how like the customs agent was like you too you too like he was it was somewhere over in Europe and he couldn't tell, speak a lot of English so he's going you too and then Colt's like maybe he was just a big fan of the band and, like it was just like just quick little things yeah. like he talked to you about and like, I don't know he's he's, a, he's one of the best guys I've met like I'm not saying I met a lot of guys in wrestling but uh, no complaints about that guy whatsoever yeah he's he's super funny um, uh, next uh, we had uh, a segment in the ring with, um, it, well it included. Uh, Brody Steele, um, Gary, and uh, Mick Foley made his first appearance in the Wrestle Center ring, and the fans loved it. Oh, they lost their minds. Yeah, it was great. Um, um, I've, I've never, <clears throat> like, I've been, you know, trained by Gary, and, you know, if you mess up, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll tell you you messed up. And, like, if you keep doing it, like, you'll get, like, he doesn't really snap at people that often. Mm -hmm. So to see him just go off on Brody, me and the guys in the back from the, from the, the most recent class, we were get, we were happy. We were just <laughs> like, this is amazing. Because, first of all, it's not at us. No. <laughs> and second of all, it's after, you know, someone that's been beating us up. So it's like... This is wicked, and like to see that side of Gary was amazing. Yeah, well, like we all know, Gary is a, a legend in the maritime wrestling scene. He retired about a year ago, and yep. ever since Brody's been after him, trying to uh, get him to come out of retirement and fight Brody. So that happened. Um, you know, throughout the show, uh, there was a couple times where you know he was at, after Gary, and the final straw was, of course. Include it, uh, yours truly, uh, Justin's. <laughs> and yeah. who else was there? Was it Brett? Uh, it was me, Brett, Dylan, and Nick. Nick. So, not to give away much of the show, but at the end of uh, Nick and Greaser's match, uh, stuff happened. And then. And it wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty whatsoever. Stuff happened. Uh, then they beat down Nick. Dylan came out to help out, and who comes out behind him? You know, the big... Massive. Yeah, massive man. So, you know, he beats up he beats up them, and then uh, he comes back through the curtain, and we didn't know what to do, and then Tyler's like, go. You know what I mean? Like, because like, they're motionless in the ring. So, okay, so, so we go run out. We're going to help them, and then you can feel the ring shake. <laughs> you can feel it just like – it was – I don't know if they catch it on camera good enough, but I remember just before I when my head just goes down, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. Like, I know what's going to happen right now. Turn around. I don't know why we didn't just get out of the ring. Yeah. Why? <laughs> but, of course, we, of course, we go towards them, with, you know, and I've taken clotheslines. I've taken in a lot of clotheslines in training. And some matches and stuff like that, and some from some pretty pretty big dudes. Oh my god! I could just imagine. That was a wall. I, I, done. That was it. And then he picked us up and piled us, and Gary yeah. comes running out. It was a uh, a big. I don't even know how to explain it, but the end result on April the ninth, Wild Man Gary Williams is coming out of retirement. And is facing Brody Steele. That in itself is a main event in any building in the Atlantic provinces, if I do dare say Canada or the world. Like it's just a massive match. Lots of history. They go way back. It's part, uh, uh, Cardinal Sinners. Um, Gary's been out of the ring for a year. I can't wait. I I when I was a fan years ago, going to RAW watching wild man russell i was a huge fan um so when he retired for at the beginning of russell center's uh you know the start of russell center um i was kind of upset that i wouldn't see him wrestle again yeah. well that's going to change on april 9th it's going to be it's going to be awesome i uh i'd love to be out there ringside you know to be in his corner but you know that's two that's that's one match that it just needs to be two of them in a ring Put so the ref on the put the ref on the outside. Yeah, maybe. Just let them do what they got to do. So I, would, I wouldn't want to take a ref bump from Brody Steele. <laughs> Just saying. Um, the next match that happened, I 
officially call it match of the night. Titus versus Julian Young. I can't say enough about the finishing maneuver off the top rope that Titus <laughs> does. I've seen it before on video. I've never seen it live. Thank you, guys. It was the corner by where I sit, too, so it was just even more yeah. impressive. I, uh, a match, and the fans love Julian Young. Oh, Julian is just... Like, I've seen him wrestle in, in, you know, different cities and stuff. And same with Titus. And it took, like, it took a while for the rest of the center crowd to warm up to him. I don't know why. But, you know, they're a special, they're a special crowd. So, uh, but, yeah, he is so liked by the fans now. Like, we got a double dose of Julian. Yeah. So, Well, they, you know, they learned, they, I think they, after the ladder match, they're like, man, this guy is hands down. Yeah. One of the t most talented guys um, that the uh, that finishing man maneuver oh, off. What do you off call it? Uh, the Spanish fly. Is that what is it? Okay. It's called the Spanish fly. So uh, I've seen it once before, uh, in a different city, and I believe Titus did it to. I want to say Chris Cook. Okay. Wow, he's a big boy. He is a big guy, and. Uh, just see him go to the top rope, and I was like, "Man, I've seen something like this before." And they go, and it's like, "How do you?" <laughs> you know I, don't, I, mean? I don't know. And, it's amazing. And then, like, and then when they were, when Julian was climbing to the top rope, I'm like, "Oh, okay." Like, you know, he's probably going to, you know, cross body. Like, I don't know. There's so many maneuvers you can do off it. Uh, and then I see heel faction come out and interfere, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, okay, whatever." And then uh titus starts to climb the rope i was like no there's no way they're gonna do it and then he kicks people off and stuff like that and it's like okay yeah they're not doing it and then boom, 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 gone and it's just like... i think a lot of it too is um when the guys get up there and they see you know just how many like the fans at the halifax forum that night it was standing room only like it, it was, was insane. it was insane so i think as as a, a performer when you go out and you know, see that many people. You you pull out a little few tricks that you don't normally do, maybe. Not for and, sure. Because that's the first time I've ever seen Titus do that. And Titus is so talented. He's like, ah, oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, the next match was the title match. Uh, Marcus Burke versus Lincoln Steen, two very popular uh, wrestlers at Russell yeah. Center. Um, Marcus Burke called out Sarah Dunsworth in the audience. Sarah Dunsworth is... Uh, yeah. She's an actress on Trailer Park Boys. They were kind of sparring back and forth on Twitter That's all what day. it was. I knew right. that I knew the name. Yeah. But when, when, uh, like I'm sitting at the music table, and she had her hood up a bit, so I couldn't see her face properly and because she was off to the side. And I was like, who the fuck are they talking to? But, I was following them all day on Twitter. They were back and forth, back and oh, forth. Oh, were they? Oh, yeah. And he gets out of the ring, and he calls her out. That's you know, awesome. On Twitter, I believe he said once he beat Lincoln Steen, he was going to take her home so he could cook her dinner. Or no, <laughs> she could cook him dinner. Yeah. I want Marcus Burke on the podcast, by the way. Burke, I know uh, you watch. You told me. Yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure we can arrange it. Uh, he's pretty busy right now at the moment, so. Yeah. But uh, uh, that I got I to gotta say something about that match. Okay. That was a hard-hitting match. Yeah. Those boys, that like, Steen wanted that title, and, of course, there was no way Burke was giving it up. And they put it all out in the ring. So, like, there was a couple of times where I was just like, all right, someone's someone's not going to get up now in a second. But, you yeah. know. I can't say enough good things about Lincoln Steen either uh, in regards to um, retweeting everything I put on, on Twitter. <laughs> and I told him, I said, like, you you are a godsend. I said, like, if I could get every guy to retweet everything, mm. you'd make my job easy. He is uh, he's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy backstage. Awesome. awesome oh, guy. yeah. Uh, next, we had the first ever last man standing match. It was Nick Diggs versus Greaser James Carr. Wow. Hard hitting. That was another hard hitting match. Um, I'm not going to give away anything from that match whatsoever, but uh, when it comes on voltage, like, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> grab, yeah. some, grab some popcorn. Like, it's a. Uh, and they had a special guest referee. I don't know who it was. We well, have a special guest referee. It was great and added to it. Um, so yeah, um, it was our first last man standing match. Hopefully, it won't be the last one because it was great. I I always like what, what do you call them? Gimmick matches? What do you what do you? 
Uh, I don't know. know. Everyone's got a different name for yeah. them. specialty matches, gimmick matches, whatever matches. It's just just adds to it, really. Yeah. Um, I get to climb in the ring and talk about uh, April 9th and the fact that Matt Seidel is coming to Wrestle Center. I've heard that name all year when people, when we ask the fans, who do you want to see at Wrestle Center? Matt Seidel was always named. He is coming April 9th. We put it in the hands of the fans to vote who they wanted him to face. And the winner was Double XL. So on yeah. April 9th, Double XL versus Matt Seidel. That's going to be a very interesting match. It's off the, off the charts. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what the. Like, I've seen Matt Seidel, not wrestling, not live, but I've seen this stuff. Obviously, you know, when he was at Heaven Born WWE, uh, his indie stuff. <clears throat> one of the best ever, you know what I mean, shooting stair press. Uh, I'm excited to see what Double uh, XL is going to bring out of this. Yeah, I think he's going to. Because like, he, you know, I mean, he's not like a high, high flyer, like, or Matt or Evan, what do you want to call him is, but he, he can. He has the ability. He has the ability so I'm excited to see what he's going to bust out because I know, you know, Double XL, I like to think, you know, we're friends when we're good friends. Um, you know, seeing all his old stuff and everything like that, like, I, you know, he's not scared to put his body on the line. So let's see what he brings to the table there. That, that's what I'm very excited to see for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> speak, speaking of dream matches, my man Dean Fisk then comes out. And, ch and challenges Double XL. I cannot get enough of Dean Fisk. I love him. Um, it was a good match. It was a good match. It was. A it was a good. Like, not not to say I'm surprised it was a good match, but like it was. It was just I didn't know the match was happening because I thought I thought Steve was just coming out to uh, you know accept his award, say thanks to the fans, and then all of a sudden I'm sitting at the table and Dean walks by and just grabs him like off the table. I'm like, what are you doing? Like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I had no idea it was happening. It was just like he comes out and he cuts his promo and stuff like that. And it's like, what a dick. Like, <laughs> like whatever, you know. Um, he's getting uh, – he's I wouldn't say he's getting over the crowd, but his uh, his mannerisms are, yeah. you know. if yeah. uh, I think I think he needs to get a shirt that just says – I don't know how you'd spell it, but yeah. Like, I don't know how. Yeah. It's awesome. Um uh, next thing that happened in the ring, uh, we were supposed to have an intermission, but uh, time uh, was just running a little late. So yeah. we, we uh, cut out the intermission and went right to um, a great, great moment inside a Russell Center ring was when I went in and pretended that we we're going to do the 50 50 draw. And instead, this happened. <laughs> watched the wedding proposal of Kevin and Amanda and we have them here now live on the Wrestle Center podcast. Hello guys and welcome to the podcast. Hey. hey. Thanks for having us. Uh, how was the show the other night by the way? It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah? Yeah it was great. We had a great time. Cool. And uh, a big part of the show of course was uh, Kevin and Amanda. Kevin uh, planned this well in advance. Kevin you want to Go back a little ways and tell us when exactly you decided that proposing to your girlfriend inside a Russell Center ring was a great idea. <laughs> well, uh, I actually thought about it. Uh, we went to a few shows back in August, and uh, I had kind of brought it up to her, like, what if, you know, what if this happened? And she kind of thought it was a good idea, so I kind of kept it in the back of my head. And uh, after the last show of 2014 in November, I kind of uh, just mentioned it to... Jason, 
to see if that was something he would have been would be willing to let me do, and he was. So we kind of let it stew for a little bit, and then once the dates were announced, then we, that's when the planning kind of started. And you keep saying we. You don't you don't include Amanda in that we. No, no, not we. I mean we as in me and Russell Center. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so you uh, contacted, well I guess Jason kind of said contact Kevin, he has an idea. I had no idea what it was, I contacted you. And uh, so between the two of us, we schemed and planned and came up with the idea of the whole 50-50 ticket. Uh, yep. Amanda, when I plucked you out of the audience, what was your first uh, thought? I'm going to get a belt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Which you didn't, so I guess I have to write that down. We owe Amanda a belt. <laughs> so uh, then, no. uh, uh, our whole fear was that you would see Kevin get into the ring. So we had to make sure your back was to the uh, steps, which, of course, at the beginning was not. So I had to turn you around and <laughs> lie and say it's because of the TV camera. Uh, but in comes Kevin. I tell you I pretty well lied and turn around. What did you think was going on? I thought maybe that Mick Foley was there or something, <laughs> <laughs> like come out to see the contestant to draw the 50-50 ticket. Um, but uh, when I turned around, I was surprised and uh, my heart was pretty much beating out of my chest immediately. <laughs> and of course, uh, the fans went crazy before poor Kevin could even get a word <laughs> in edgewise. <laughs> Uh, I told them earlier on one of our Skype, Skype uh, conversations, planning this, that, uh, you know, a wrestling crowd, you never know, they could have booed you out of the building, but I think our Wrestle Center fans were pretty gracious, and uh, Kevin got on bended knee, and Kevin, I don't know if anybody remembers what you said, or if you remember, uh, do you remember what you said? Yeah, I told her that I loved her, and uh, that she meant the world to me, and then I asked her to marry me. I had I had a lot of things planned to say, which I didn't say any of it because in the moment it, I just went blank and I just blurted out the first first things I could think of. Uh, of course, she said yes. Absolutely. Not only did she say yes, she did the <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that I think that was a given for her to have to do that. Like it's like how else are you supposed to say yes to something like that? Exactly. Yeah, you know, the, the crowd and everybody made it so memorable. Like, it was just, the whole experience was amazing. I couldn't have asked for anything else. <laughs> well, I, re I remember uh, during one of our Skype conversations before a podcast one time, me and David were talking, and he brought up that you were thinking about doing this. So, at the show, it completely slipped my mind that it was going to happen, and I had to run out towards the end of the show. And right. then when I come back, I was like, oh, guys, what did I miss? Like, you know, I thought I was like, I was like, who did they pick out of the crowd for the 50-50 of her kid? And they're like, Kevin proposed. I was like, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> and I'm telling you, and a lot of fans pointed this out on Twitter uh, following the event. When you got on bended knee, the pop you got would probably rival <laughs> any of the night other than the ending of the show, which we will talk later about. But um, right. Yeah, and then, of course, uh, part of the whole planning, Amanda, was uh, I contacted a few of the hardcore fans, uh, too, who have the white streamers ready to chuck into the ring when you uh, said yes. So, yeah. <laughs> on cue, God love our fans, they added they to were the... Wonderful. It was so it was, great. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry? Oh, that was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the feedback afterwards, uh, like I said, on, feed, on Facebook and uh, Twitter, uh, people that don't know you were like, they gave you a new nickname, and Kevin, what's your new, new nickname? The Wrestling Romeo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look for that T-shirt at the next event. <laughs> so we've got, yeah, we've got T-shirts in production. <laughs> um, afterwards, you guys get out of the ring. I kind of glanced over. and You guys weren't even watching the show anymore. You were over <laughs> the, the firewall. Amanda was on her phone. Who were you calling? Uh, I was uh, calling my mom and I didn't realize we had so many more friends that uh, secretly uh, showed up and were hanging out uh, around the thing. So it was, I wasn't expecting so many people to be there that I knew. <laughs> so that's why we had so many people there because of the proposal and not because of the other people. <laughs> yeah, Mick, Mick Foley might think that it was because of him, but yeah. definitely. Yeah, fair enough. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Um, he, uh, Kevin put out a, a nice touching little thank you video. Uh, you also thanked in that video uh, Shane Stevens. Tell us a little bit about uh, Shane. Uh, well, Shane, Shane's a friend of ours. He's uh, we've met him through the shows, but uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's he's been to our house, uh, and actually after immediately after the proposal, which was actually immediately following his match, he came out and congratulated both of us, gave us both a hug. So we thought that was awesome. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. Um, yeah. The show, of course, continued on. Um, the main event happened, and then the lights went out. Lights came on, and there's Samoa Joe to steal your guys' thunder. What did you guys <laughs> think of the ending, right quick? It, it was it was, easy. it was awesome. Yeah, I, I was I was losing I was losing my mind because I'm a huge huge Samoa Joe fan. So I thought that was that was great. It was a great way to end the night. Like it, the night was already perfect, and it just made it that much better. Yeah. Um, so we'll see you guys, of course, on the uh, 9th of April. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, we'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Just We just want to talk to you guys real quick. Uh, all the best, best wishes in your wedding. I don't know if they'll be inside of a Russell Center ring or not. but I don't think so, but <laughs> you never Justin know. Justin can uh, officiate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So, it's, Justin, do you have anything you want to say? No, I just want to say congratulations to both you guys. I, I wish I could have been there. Um, to well, we appreciate see the you, we appreciate you coming out and congratulations congratulating us afterwards. So yeah, no, uh, for sure. I just wish I could have been there at the moment, but I had stuff to do. But so uh, I say as soon as I got home, someone posted the video. So of course I watched that, and it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you also said you brought some extra family and friends to the show to see the proposal. But were they Russell Center fans before? It was it's their first show, and are they coming back? Uh, one of my, uh, my, one of my cousins comes to all the shows with us and his brother and his kids had come, but they came all the way from Cape Breton to see Mick Foley and they actually didn't know the proposal was happening until it happened. Okay. So they were, so they were pretty surprised too. Uh, but, uh, one of my friends and her, her husband came and uh, they fell in love with the, with Wrestle Center. So they're coming back with us in April. Awesome. So uh, we're definitely some new fans. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I told Kevin during one of our uh, Skype conversations prior to the show was, uh. When you get into the ring with a microphone surrounded by f fans, the mm -hmm. sound is way off. You, you know, you tend to scream, whatever. Um, but that night we had, <laughs> well, the house was packed. So poor Kevin was just, <laughs> I, I, I even said at one time, start talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, best of luck. Thank you so much for including us in your special moment. And we will see you on the 9th of April. All right, guys, thank, thank you. you so much. And that was Kevin and Amanda. Congratulations, you guys. It was so awesome. Lucky. So lucky to them. And I know I, I said it just then, but, you know, it really upset me in a way that I couldn't have been there for the moment, right? But it is what it is. You're a busy man during the show. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, show wouldn't happen without you. I'll, I'll say everything. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Shane Stevens against Matt Bolin was next. Matt Bolin? Mountain of a man. I missed the match. Shane, where were you for that? <laughs> where do you think I was? Like, I missed, I missed. All the, right. Well, you uh, were taken out by Brody Steele. You are probably at an uh, ambulance or something, maybe. Is like, I missed, I missed that, and I missed the match, and it really pissed me off because, you know, I was talking to Shane earlier about it, and uh, he was excited about it because after them, you know, calling each other out the past, like, two, three weeks or whatever, um, of course, I never got to see it. But uh, it was, it was the help the show. It was a really good match. Yeah. Yeah, super, super good. Um, Matt Bolton's really talented. Shane Stevens. I mean, what can you say about Shane Stevens? He's fantastic. Um, and that brought us to the main event, uh, the IFWA Heavyweight Championship. Christopher Daniels. I, I can't say enough good about him, even though he's a <laughs> he's a member of Heel Faction. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, he defended against uh, the undefeated Riddick Stone. It was a, a tough match. Brutal. Riddick Stone's like fighting. A, he's just a mountain of a man. Yeah. Christopher Daniels was hitting with everything he, he could. He was, Riddick was just standing his ground. You know, give me what you want, what you can. Um, great, great main event. Um, everyone knows Christopher Daniels uh, retains. That's not, no big secret because of... Uh, us advertising the next next event, so I don't have to protect that. Um, so Riddick Stone leaves. 
Some of the fans think that's the end of the show. You should never do that. It is never nine chances out of ten. And a couple of my friends was this, this was their first show that they came to, and at the end of the match, they're like, "Oh man, the show was awesome. You know, we'll see you at work tomorrow." I was like, "Don't leave, don't leave," because you never know you never until know. until until you get in the ring, like until you Dave boys get in the ring and say, "All right, guys, Thanks see you next time." That's your cue to leave. That's your cue to leave. Do not leave before you get before Dave gets in the ring to say goodbye, because. <laughs> Something could happen, and of course, something did and I, happen. And I will tell you, normally, I usually know everything that's going on the show. I didn't know, which at first kind of pissed me off, Urgh, Jason Moser. But he wanted me to live the moment like everyone else. Christopher Daniels, Heel Faction, were in the ring. They play AJ Styles music. Everyone thought AJ Styles was uh, once again entering Russell Center. Um, then the music stopped. The fans booed. Heel faction thought they got the last laugh. Boom! Every light in the Halifax form shuts down. Yep. And then, boom, comes back on. And who's standing in the center of the Russell Center ring is freaking Samoa Joe. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so you're probably going to hate me for this one. Um, too, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I didn't know. I I knew five minutes before it happened. Right, because you're, well, you're well, the... not Okay, a little, okay, maybe let's play say 10 or 15, but like, I don't know if people remember the last podcast or one of the last podcasts we talked about. Uh, Jason and Tyler came to me and was like, all right, we need you to go pick up somebody at the hotel. All right, guys, can you tell me? Because I don't, maybe if I don't know, if I, if I don't see him or something like that, and they're like, no, you'll understand. And I said, no, please tell me. And they told me, you know, it was the, the AJ Styles surprise. So anyways, Jason comes to me uh, just before we're supposed to have the intermission, which I thought we were having. And he comes to me, he's like, I need you to go pick somebody up. Like, who who this time, right? And there was a bunch of people standing around. He's like, no, I can't tell you this time or something like that. And I was like, no, come on. Like, don't do this to me. And they're like, no, you'll understand as soon as you see the person. And we're talking about a show that already has Christopher Daniels, Colt Cabana, and Mick Foley. Yep. So what could you – what? I'd, I'd, I'd end it once again. But anyway, go once, ahead. Again, once again, I didn't know who it was. Obviously, there's, there's – uh, there's names going around in my head, uh, you know, who's been who's been in the area, who's been on the East Coast for the Indies lately, uh, who's been released from different companies, who quit different companies. So it's all going through my mind. Finally, like, all right, so I go to the hotel, and I'm just standing in, in the lobby. And the way the the way the, ho- uh, the elevated doors open, they're not facing where I'm standing. They're facing, like, on an angle from me. So I'm standing there, standing there, and, like, I'm looking at my watch, and I'm like, all right, like, it's... This should be the time that somebody should come in down. I hear the elevator doors open. It's like, ding. And fucking Samoa Joe comes in with the fucking elevator. And in my head, I was like, two things happened. And it was all simultaneously. <laughs> it was, okay, I know it's him. And then his music started playing in my head. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, how you doing, sir? I'm Justin. Jason sent me to pick you up. He's like, yeah, I know. Get in the car. And on the way there, he's asked me, he's like, so what's Halifax known for? And I'm like, I'm still in my mind, like, what the Holy f- shit, is Samoa yeah. Joe. What the fuck? Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, um, I don't know, it's, you know, Scottish roots. And I, I start, like, mumbling shit and stuff like that. And I'm just like. Yeah, he told me after the show he's never been in Nova Scotia before. No, that's one thing I asked him. I said because yeah. they, that's what led up to like what's Nova Scotia known for. Yeah. But I was like, I was like, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. And, you know, I tried mumbling out <laughs> shit, but I couldn't really get it out. Dude, and it, it was just because, and this is why I want to be told things. So I'm not like not because I'm like marking out or freaking out as a fan or anything. It's just like it's good to be mentally prepared that you're picking up. Yeah, you know what I mean. Stuff like that. It's just like I just you know. Like if Anyways. Jason told me to go to a hotel and pick up someone and Hulk Hogan walked out, I wouldn't make it back to the forum. I'd still be sitting there. <laughs> yeah, well, not me, but anyway. I'm a Hulkamaniac. Anyways, not me. We won't get into that. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, so we get in the car, we get down to the forum. Uh, it was winter time, so I wasn't going to leave him in the car. The plan was to leave him in the car for a couple minutes, but I didn't know where we were in the main event. I didn't know what Jason really wanted done at the time. So I was just like, all right, sir, you know, let's go. So we go to walk in, and um, we go to walk in the back of the forum. Uh, there's a couple of guys standing inside because they were shooting a segment or something, and they give me that look, like, again? And I was like, I didn't know it. Like, I didn't at all. Like, you know, and they're just like, okay. So bring them in, and then they walk in um, – they walk in, or we walk in the back, and a couple of the guys are standing right there by the entrance of the, the room, and then right away, you know, respectfully shaking their hand, shaking his hand, stuff like that. <laughs> I look over, and God love him, but new Scott, he's probably gonna get caught, he's gonna probably gonna get pissed, pissed off because I'm gonna do this. But uh, I look over at him, and he's just <laughs> just doesn't know what to say whatsoever, and it's just like. So I run back out. I'm like, yeah, he's in the back to Jason. Jason's like, all right. So he goes out. And then Jason comes to me and he's like, I thought it was going to be an AJ Styles type thing. Like, are we going to do yeah. music? And he's like, go cut the lights. What? And he's like, cut the ring lights and then turn on turn on the center lights. Yeah, right. and, and cutting the lights in the whole Halifax form. Yeah, You're not every, just turning a switch. Everything went dark. So, like, you know, the ring lights is on one switch. And, like, I run back and... Boom, smack them. Yeah. And, like, people lose their minds. And I'm like, wait, when do I – like, so then I count a little bit. And I'm like, okay, uh, is he, like, going to be standing in the hallway? Is he going to be getting in the ring? Like, what's going on? And then I hear a couple of couple people just being like, is that – is that jo-? – and I was like, fuck this. And I slam the lights on and then apparently it looked good. Now I can't wait to see it on video. Ah, it, it was del- – the live the moment was awesome. Um, I yeah. believe we're going to release the, the video footage of it this week, so just to let oh, everyone, the ones that didn't see it. And a lot of people commented on social media, they wish they were there. Uh, a lot of Samoa Joe fans out there. Speaking of fans, um, Landon, uh. Landon Hero, who is uh, one of our biggest fans, uh, I, I, it's safe to say he marked out, and uh, we actually have Landon Hero with us on the podcast. Is, so is he calling in? He's calling in. So right now, let's go to Landon Hero. So we are now joined live by Landon Hero, one of the biggest fans of Wrestle Center. Landon, welcome to the Wrestle Center podcast. Glad to be here. I've been watching all the episodes, so it'll be it's good to be on. Cool. And Justin's very excited that you're here. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, put me over on the last one. <laughs> Justin, you're lucky. He doesn't put anybody over. Nope. Feel on them all. <laughs> um, before we get going, I uh, just want to congratulate you. You were the winner of the poster contest. Thank you. I then, was glad to win. And then five minutes later, you destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, some water pulled up under my seat, and the poster was securely under my sweaters. So I don't know. <laughs> well, I sent you. I'll send you. I'll grab your email later and send you the actual. You can go to Staples. It cost a buck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know Justin's dying to ask you some questions, so I'm going to hand yep. it over to Justin. <laughs> What's up, Landon? Not much. Right on. I just want to get your thoughts on a bunch of the things that's happened over the year. So what's your thoughts on the last year in general? Uh, I mean, I was at uh, the first Wrestle Center show ever where it was like a double with UCW where they brought in Matt Stryker. That was a good one. And then when they were separated by themselves for AJ Styles – you could see Wrestle Center just evolved so much from that show to now. It's a lot better. It was good back then, but now they have more people coming in. They have, you know, just great, great fan base. You can see the attendance go up and up and up every show. So, All right. You speak on the fan base. It was uh, one of the other questions. Like, what what's uh, it like for you to be a part of that fan base? Like, such a unique crowd. It's awesome. I mean, you know, it's finally you can find people, your people, to go to a wrestling show with and socialize and, you know, be a part of this big phenomenon, which is the Wrestle Center crowd, which is awesome. It's Damn. Good to be a part of. Those are good. <laughs> um, your all time fave match, like your favorite match from the past year. I'm going to have to say uh, Suave and Julian was a really good match. So I'll have to go with that one. Uh, yeah, mine, that's mine, fair. Mine too. Yeah. 
you look back and watch it, um, my brother came down for the last show, and uh, he wasn't really up on Russell Center Voltage, and Dave was telling me, he's like, show him that match, and that's all you need to show for to get Russell Center over. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Matthew was uh, hooked after that one. Yeah, uh, it, it had, like, a... The hardcore aspect with the ladders and all the spots from that, and then it had technical wrestling and it had speed and everything you could want in a wrestling match was in that match, and it was awesome. You Good. travel, you travel four hours for a show, do you not? Yeah. So who who drives you to uh, Halifax? Uh, most times, my good old nan giving me a drive up. So uh, sometimes if she can't make it, my dad will take me. So. So they, yeah. They drive you four hours. That's awesome. Where does grandma go during the show, or is she in the audience too? Uh, there was a few times she was in the audience, but other than that, she stays in the car, reads a book or the newspaper, or plays Candy Crush Saga or whatever. God love her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she better be getting a really good birthday gift and Christmas gift this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, who's your favorite heel and face? Uh, favorite <clears throat> heel, I would have to say Burke. Because, I mean, you can look, he's not only doing good in the Maritimes, but he's doing good in, you know, he's wrestling in the States now and up in Quebec. And, I mean, you know, you can't choose anybody else. No. And as much as I want to say my quote-unquote lover Shane for the favorite face, I'm going to have to go with Star Wang. Star. <laughs> I've known him for, I've actually known him longer than I've known Shane Stevens. Okay. Uh, I knew him since he was, had a little mohawk. So, How old are you? first wrestler I know. Uh, at now or at the time? No, right now. Like how old? Oh, are you? I'm 14. Uh, <laughs> well, how old were you when you started watching wrestling? Like a local independent wrestling? Uh, I was 11, and I went to a show in Spryfield. Okay. I met cool. Bushwhacker Luke Hurricane and Big Daddy V, and that was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, who who would who's your number one guy that you is on your wish list? to come to Wrestle Center. Oh. Like someone that's never been here yet. I kind of have an idea, but... Uh, I think everybody uh, on Facebook has an idea of who it is. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say now, shocker, here's a big one, Chris Hero. Uh, and second, I'd have to go with, instead of Chris Hero, if he can't make it, Kenny Omega. Okay. Oh, Can, yeah. Uh, Kenny Omega. Me too. Yeah. That's on the top of my list. Yeah. yeah. Um, your thoughts on when AJ came back for the surprise. Oh man, I know, I think Boyce saw this. Uh, everybody like was waiting for something to happen and then his music hit and we all went nuts and I hate to say it, but I was crying when, when he came out because I didn't expect him to be there and he was and he's one of my favorites. So, you know. So were you expecting, like, did you expect it to be, like, a ruse? Or, like, were you, like, as soon as his music hit, did you be like, oh, he's coming? Or was it, like... Yeah. Like, yeah, as soon as, like, it, you, as, you soon as we heard the music, I looked over at uh, Nick Meyer, and he was he was going nuts. So I knew <laughs> it was going to be AJ. That is my favorite video footage of all Russell Center, is when you guys realized AJ Styles was there. Nick was jumping up and down, yeah. and you which, which were ones? just screaming. <laughs> like, I don't love anybody that much. <laughs> it was, it was just, AJ it was, Styles. I mean, you know, I used to watch him in TNA, and he was good the first time uh, when he came, and then it was just nobody expected him to be there. Yeah. And it was a good show, and then all the excitement built up, and it was, I don't know, it was just a magical moment. Okay, so last question that I have anyways. Uh, the last show when his music came back on, what was your thoughts? Uh, well, I was talking with a buddy of mine, and then we heard the music, and, I, and everyone was like, oh my god, AJ Styles. And I thought, no, it's just going to be something Daniels is playing or whatever, and he was. Then the lights went out, right? And I turned to my friend, I said, okay, Aries, Joe, or uh, Hero. And it was Joe, and we went nuts. So... <laughs> It, the yeah. Alpox form went insane. That was. The light. Yeah. <laughs> it was. When I, it was when, awesome I turned the, when I turned the lights back on, 
I wanted to see the reaction of the crowd, but I, at least I heard it. Like you could feel it in the in the building. Yeah, like, it wasn't just like everyone yelled. You could feel everybody just got more energetic as soon as the lights came on. So, well, I believe pretty... we and we sent people to the front door to stop them from leaving because people always have a tendency to leave, and they should yeah. know by now at a Wrestle Center show. The last match is not always the last thing you're going to see. Yeah, yeah. it's a hockey game. If someone's winning 4-2 and it's the third period, people start leaving, it drives me crazy. Anything yeah. can happen. Mm -hmm. And something huge happened at this show. Did you well, cry, my Nanny? Friend... <laughs> uh, almost. It was, it was close. I mean, we saw someone in a white shirt slide in with a towel, and then we knew it was Joe. Yes. And we all went crazy. And I still have a hard time speaking because I was yelling so loud. <laughs> so you knew it was Joe just before the lights came on? You kind of got a glimpse? Yeah, we kind of got a glimpse when he slid in. Yeah. And I had a feeling because he's just off the tails of TNA. So, yeah. Very cool. Uh, one last question for you before you go. Uh, 2015, what uh, local guys, what dream match would you like to see happen? Uh, that's a tough one, but I'm going to have to put Burke in there somehow. Uh, I'm going to go with Burke, and I. a lot of people are going to hate me for this. Burke and Bullen, because I could see them putting on a really good match. Interesting. Well, then. Yeah. Speaking that of would, Bullen. That would be a hard-hitting match. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but one of them would have to be, I guess you could have heel and heel, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could see Burke being a baby face. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't, let, don't let him hear you say that. I know. Uh, speaking of Bullen, right quick, before we let you go, you were one of the few out in line to get in for the VIP. Uh, so it was about four o'clock and um, a certain car started honking their horn, pulled up in front of you guys, and in the SUV was who? Heel Faction. <laughs> uh, and I, what did they Titus do? was driving and Tyler was in the back seat, hence the chant we gave him, and Balloon was in the front seat. It was, uh, I don't really know how to respond to that because <laughs> it was a little awkward. What were they saying to you? Yeah. Uh, they were just, Bullen said something about beating Shane, so I quickly put on my gloves and told him not to dare touch my wife. Uh, <laughs> it's a Wrestle Center crowd thing. I'm, I'm married to Shane. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was a little, a little extra for you guys, uh, standing up in the cold, uh. Fuel faction pulls up and tears a good one into you. It yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, Landon, thank you so much for joining us on the Russell Center podcast, and hopefully you'll be on the show April 9th. Thank I will. Thank you for having me. No problem, buddy. Take care and say hi to all those heel section fans there standing side by side with you. Three all right. Three thank years. you. Okay. Thanks, man. No problem. Oh, he hung up on us. <laughs> I don't even have to say cut. That works. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a great kid. <laughs> Thanks, Landon, for being on the Wrestle Center podcast. You're a, you're quite the character. And we'll He's such a good kid. I like I like the guy. Yeah. So we we're yeah. talking with Samoa Joe. It is official. It has been announced uh, Thursday, April 9th at the Halifax Forum Multi Purpose Center. April 9th. IFWA Heavyweight Championship on the line. Christopher Daniels versus Samoa Joe. Um, wow. We'll get to that now in a second, and I'm going to do this because um, <laughs> she's going to kill me. But everybody in the picture, you. You know, everybody does, really. <laughs> uh, in the picture that's been posted all over Facebook where uh, Joe has Daniels up in his arm in the corner, and he goes to slam him. If you zoom in ever so slightly by the post, Madison Miles? we'll see Madison going. And yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, awesome. it's just like it's just the perfect – like as, as someone commented – um, even though that, you know, she knows 90% of the stuff that's happening because she's backstage with us. We didn't know. Um, she didn't know about this. And, but even though, you know, she, she knows most of the wrestlers, we're all like big brothers to her. She says it all the time. She's that she is our little sister. Um, and she's so used to being around wrestlers and when she still, you know, acts like that, when she gets that excited over a moment, that means you're definitely like a super fan. So yeah. it was awesome. It's so she, awesome to see. It, it is awesome. Um, she she had no clue who he was because she was like, "Who is it? Who is it?" Thinking I knew, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, don't, "I don't know. I have no yeah. idea." Um, and 
the she, light came she, on, she, and the the Halifax form just erupted. And I and kudos, you know, Jason Mosier hates us, but kudos to Jason Mosier for doing that. Doing he does it for the fans. That's number one. Yeah. Um, but you know, our anniversary show, you want to go out with a bang, and he certainly did that. Uh, it was, it was uh, at the end of the show when it was all like said and done, and you got in the ring and said, you know, okay, you know, see yeah, April yeah. 9th, there's the match. And I stuck my hand out to Jason. I was like, we got through another one, and he was just like, he was like, he was still smiling because of the way the fans are reacting. So that was good. Like, you know, it, it ended with a huge Wrestle Center chant. And if, yeah. if, we, if we can end every show like that, <laughs> yeah. It was great. Um, yeah. uh, so that was the end of the show. Everyone piled out. And then, of course, uh, the VIP people uh, stayed behind. We did the, the um, Q&A with Mick Foley. It was great. Yeah, we had yeah. a stage set up. And uh, Mr. Sacco, I got my sign. Mr. Sacco. Jealous. Mick Foley. I never even got to get one. I'll sell you this. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said earlier, we raised a ton of money for IWK. And we'll release that this week. Um, but that's, that's it. We are off to April the 9th at the Halifax Forum Multipurpose Center. Three big matches uh, already announced. Double XL taking on Matt Seidel, which could be the main event. Easily. Easily. The returning wild man Gary Williams, the maritime legend, going against Brody Steele. So much history. So personal. Uh, that could be the main event. Yep. Yeah. And then Christopher Daniels defends his title against Samoa Joe, which is just going to tear the place down. It's going to be well, awesome. It's like Joe said. He's like, we faced each other all over the world. He's like, I don't care where you go. I'll find you. I will find you. I will find you. And like he said that, I'm just standing there like. It rhymed too, right? Whatever he, he said there. It was like, the, last, the last one he said or whatever. And then it was like, I don't care. Like I'll find you. And I just like looked there. I was like, shit. Like, yeah. He ain't fucking around. Like. No. Is awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, keep following us, uh, Russell Center. Um, we launched our new website this week, russellcenter.com. Yeah. Um, like us on Facebook. Uh, we have two Facebook pages. We have the actual uh, facebook.com slash Russell Center. And then we have the group Facebook page with all the fans talking and all that stuff. Uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, follow us on Twitter uh, slash Russell Center. We're now on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so look us up there, Russell Center. Um, look me up. It's Justin PC87, I think. There you go. Oh, something like that. I'll put um, myself. Yeah, sure. I'm on Instagram too, but I, I, I do the Russell Center one now, so I've completely yeah. ignored my Dave Boyce one. Um, but that's it. That's the end of our podcast. Um, I don't know when we'll do a next one or not. Maybe we'll do one before the April 9th show, but that's really coming up fast. It's March. Yeah, it is. It's like I think I think lit. it's good. I think it's good. I think it's good though because we we had such a long time between shows, and we started 2015 off with a bang. Yeah. There's only one way to go for us. We have to, and we're going to. We have to keep going up. So. Yeah. Uh, the, expect the uh, expect the you know the best obviously because we have the best guys so it's going to be awesome yeah it's a hell of a roster we have they're so talented tell your friends about wrestle center tell them uh anything can happen and the april 9th show is already shaping up to be a classic and we only have three matches announced we'll be announcing I, more matches throughout the week i paid 25 bucks for those three matches so if we yeah. get anything else afterwards exactly it's a bonus. awesome all right, guys, that is it. This is uh, Dave and Justin. We will see you maybe again with Sean, hopefully, uh, before hopefully. April 9th. If not, we will see you at the Halifax Forum Multipurpose Center, April 9th, Russell Center. Tell everyone and follow us online. Justin, say goodbye. Goodbye. Greaser's got Justin's number. Uh, <laughs> and, we'll yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, take, take care.